Network Africa. Eight infants die after a fire blazes through the maternity unit of an Algerian hospital. Security forces in Ghana arrest three alleged coup plotters after their plans to target the presidency were foiled. Plus, over 11,000 health workers in Liberia begin a nationwide strike over pay and lack of equipment. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Teni Ola Shubawale. We begin in Algeria with this very tragic story where eight infants have died after a fire swept through the maternity unit of a hospital in the eastern region. Authorities say they rescued 11 infants, over 100 women and 28 staff on Tuesday morning in the city of El Oued. Dozens of fire engines were deployed to contain the fire, the cause of which is not yet clear. Prime Minister Noridin Bendoui has ordered an urgent investigation and the country's health minister visited the scene to investigate further. This is not the first time a fire has occurred at the maternity ward, ward of Bashar bin Nasser Hospital. A fire broke out in May last year, but did not result in any casualties. Now, Ghana's Information Ministry says security forces have followed an elaborate plot to target the presidency with the ultimate aim of destabilizing the country. According to authorities, a joint security operation last Friday led to the arrest of three people and seizure of several weapons. One of those arrested included a local arms manufacturer. The operation reportedly came after 15 months of surveillance and gathering of evidence on the activities of the prime suspects and others. Joining us now to discuss more on this is a Ghanaian journalist, Beatrice Sinaju. Uh, thanks for joining us on Network Africa. This is quite a surprising story. Uh, you know, Ghana is considered one of the more stable countries in West Africa. What are officials saying is the motive behind this attempted coup plot? All right, thank you very much for the opportunity. According to a statement by the information minister, the perpetrators formed a group called Take Action Ghana, it was under the guise of mobilizing the youth for nation building, education, health, and among others. However, evidence available showed that the intent was to build a support base of youth and radicalize them against the political authority of the country and the Ecuador led government. The alleged plot is also aimed at destabilizing the economy. So far, this is what we know are the motives behind. We are still um, following up on the story to get to the details and bottom of it. Yeah, Beatrice, these people, you know, they have been arrested. Uh, what consequences are they likely to face for this? For now, um, they are in the custody of the BNI, an ongoing intensive search for the rest of the other members of the manufacturing syndicates is also underway. You know, efforts um, by the family members to secure bail for them proved futile. And uh, for now, they will be arraigned before court for the final decision to be taken. So for now, um, we, we are hoping that... Um, the court, the court proceedings will be um, will be made faster enough to ensure that um, peace come into the country. Okay, what about the uh, the president Nana Akufo-Addo? Has he said anything or made any comments uh, on this? No, for now the president has not commented yet on the issue. For now, it is only the state security agencies who have since given assurances that they will continue to work to safeguard the nation's security. They have also called for the public to remain calm and provide information 
on any suspicious persons or activities. So we are still um, holding our arms to hear what the government or the president have, have yeah, and Beatrice, just before I let you go, speaking of the public, how are Ghanaians reacting to this? Okay, we all know Ghana to be a peaceful country for decades now. The news came in as a shock to many. However, most people do not believe that the ammunition found as evidence will be sufficient enough for anybody attempting to overthrow the state. Some people are also asking questions with others saying government acted prematurely in concluding that the corporates could be plotting to subvert the presidency. Some are also making fun of it on social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and other um, media sites. And they have this uh, counter coup weapons challenge when they display items Like, that's on the lighter side. Yeah. So far, this is what is going on, and we are working around the block to bring you details yeah. on, on the updates of this particular issue. All right, Beatrice, we do appreciate that. Uh, Ghanaian journalist Beatrice Sinaju, thanks for joining us on the program. Moving on now, U.S. President Donald Trump has restated the strong backing he has for Egyptian President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi as Egypt battles with protests at home. Speaking on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly in New York, President Trump says the United States and Egypt have a great long-term relationship. When asked about the demonstrations back in Cairo, President al-Sisi blamed it on what he describes as political Islam. Meanwhile, human rights activists say almost 500 people have been detained in Egypt in the past few days after protests against alleged government corruption. Demonstrations were reported in Cairo, Alexandria and several other cities on Friday night and the port city of Suez on Saturday evening. The authorities have not yet released an official number of arrests on the President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi. There has been a wide-ranging crackdown on dissent and protests are very rare. Public gathering of more than 10 people without government approval have been banned since 2013, when Mr. Sisi led the military's overthrow of Egypt's first democratically elected leader, Mohamed Mursi. In Liberia, over 11,000 health workers have begun a nationwide strike over pay and lack of equipment. The Secretary General of the Liberian Health Workers Association, George Williams, says that some people have not been paid for six months. He adds that they don't have basic equipment like disposable gloves. They need to do their jobs and EVs. For more on this is librarian journalist Evelyn Sigbe. Thanks for joining us on the program. Evelyn, help us understand how bad is the situation? The situation is actually not healthy for the country because pregnant women, mother with children, they could not have access to medical care. Um, just yesterday, there were people who were turned down. Some of the people, patients who have gone to the hospital had to stage roadblocks because according to them, uh, no health workers was available to attend to them. So it's actually not a good one for the country. People who were admitted on hospital beds were put down. They were you know, asked to go home because there was no help to attend to them. Earlier this morning, I made some staffs at one of the major government um, hospitals or facilities in the city. That's the Peace uh, City area um, where a hospital, a government facility that attends to mostly pregnant women and baby mother, the gate was closed. There was no one attending to any patient there this morning. Yeah, well, well, we know why, you know, these medical workers are going on strike. What exactly are they demanding from the medical practitioners? There are several issues they are raising. One, um, the health workers are having issues about the salary cut, which is coming from the ongoing government payroll harmonization process, where the government is trying to harmonize the payroll 
And some of the health workers have complained about their salary being reduced. Some of them have not taken pay for over three months. There are also some of the health workers in some counties across some government, you know, public health centers that don't have um, medication. Patients are asked to go and purchase their own medicine after they've done the diagnosis. Some hospitals don't have diagnosis machine. Some don't have laboratory equipment. There's so many concerns they are raising. I asked George Paul William earlier today, what happens if the government doesn't address their See, it seems we are lost, uh, losing connection with Evelyn. But Evelyn, if you can, if you can hear me, uh, has there been any comments so far from the government as this is obviously affecting patients? You said that again, please. Okay, Evelyn, if you can hear me, uh, I was asking, has there been any comments so far from the government as this is clearly affecting patients? I spoke with the government, um, that's the head of um, one of the government's uh, minister, the minister of health, the chief medical officer, said to me that they are quite aware about it. Um, so the impact is going to have on the health sector, on patients. That's why they have began paying the health workers. The government is really concerned. And of course, it's an issue of attention. The government sees and the government knows clearly the impact is having on not just the patient, but the entire health sector. That's mm -hmm. what I get. If, you know, this gets resolved as soon as possible. Evelyn Sibe, a Liberian journalist, thanks for speaking to us on the program. Uh, moving on now, a project in Morocco is using agriculture to keep youth at home and working. In an area of high youth unemployment, the IFAD project has implemented agricultural cooperatives that create jobs and encourage, encourage young people to return to farming. Take a look. In the remote mountains of Al Haouz province in Morocco, a group of farmers are packing apples ready for sale. Farm projects are helping create jobs in the Atlas Mountains, enabling farmers increase their yield and diversify their sources of income. In a region where unemployment remains high, farm projects here have brought much needed jobs. For many years, young farmers have migrated into the cities Climate change raised concerns about shrinking harvest and farming technology handed down through the generations was antiquated. In order to turn their lives around, adopt new techniques and sell their products to a wider market, farming cooperatives were formed with support from the International Fund for Agricultural Development and the government. The cooperatives have contributed to creating jobs in the Atlas Mountains and reversing the steady flow of migration. In the past, our parents used to handle trees in an effective way, randomly. They planted apple trees, but they earned nothing. For many young people in Al Haouz, the cooperatives have improved production techniques and strengthened their bargaining power, leading to a new sense of pride in their products. About 33,000 smallholder farmers Livestock producers and residents are involved in the production of olives, apples and lamb meat, among other products, in the mountain zones of Al Haouz province. The program wants to increase participation of women and youth and also engage them in value addition of products. If I didn't come here, what would I have done? I don't know what to say. I would have been unemployed. <laughs> If we could replicate this project, in my opinion, young people could find themselves in the fabric of the economy and they will breathe new life and boost agriculture in the mountain areas and through them, the mountain areas will become a source of wealth creation instead of an area of poverty and unemployment. The country's mountainous areas, steppes and arid south are some of the poorest parts of Morocco.